Hey guys, it's Kenoni Weezy. Welcome to episode 4 of the Java programming series. And today we're going to be looking at a lot of stuff. First off, we're going to be getting more in depth, as I told you in the last video of object representation. And to do this, we are going to be grouping objects. As in, well, in the last video I used writing utensils as an example. And you can group pens and pencils in the same object. They both share a common parent. And when you refer to these objects as children of their parent, they are called polymorphic children. And when you refer to their parents, they are called polymorphic parents. All classes created in Java or any object in Java has a parent class known as the object class. Alright? So, even if it doesn't say right here, or anywhere in your program that it says it's a child of object, they are all children of the parent class object. So, we're going to actually delete this Xbox controller so that we can use a little bit better example because I don't want to get into machinery and stuff you guys want to understand. I want to get it. I want to show you guys examples that you'll definitely understand because the Xbox controller is getting a bit complicated now and we're going to have to start programming a lot of stuff that like to interfere with the console and stuff. That's not a good thing to show you for a beginner class, especially if you have no knowledge of how that works. So anyway, what we're going to be doing first is creating a class called Apple. This is an example I actually use quite a lot. And with so, um, I have a lot of questions about this and why we're doing this. Anyway, in the last video, or actually the first video, I showed you how to define attributes of a class. So we'll go ahead and we'll think of some attributes that an apple has. So its color and its seeds. And also we must provide these values during the construction of the apple. This should be a review for you. Typing this wrong. Anyway, what we're going to have to look at now is apples also have behaviors, don't they? They have a behavior to remove all seeds. So, remove seeds. And inside that behavior, a common task would be set setting something or an attribute to zero because you would want to set the seeds to zero so there's no more seeds that the apple has and they're removed that would only make sense so now that we have our apple class if we wanted to also create another class called orange correct well let's go ahead and do that now what do orange oranges have color and seeds just like apple Same thing, just like Apple. Now, you see how this is getting repetitive, especially if we rewrite the uh, remove seeds method, especially like that. You see how this is all repetitive? This is the exact same class. And they're both, they both share the exact same attributes and the exact same behaviors. So, we can group them together in something known as an abstract class. And this abstract keyword is going to pop up a lot. But for classes, it means that it cannot cr be created as a single instance and the class ca it cannot itself be instantized. And that means the class, th there can never be an instance of this class. It can be used as a type, but not as a single instance. You can never do new, whatever this is going to be here. So. For this class, since it's going to group apples and oranges, we're going to call it fruit because that's what they get grouped as. You guys should understand this, right? And you put the abstract keyword right before class. As you see, abstract class. Alright? Same as before, we define everything inside here. So, we'll put the seeds and the color, the same constructor. I failed that wrong. 
and the same behavior. Now, both of these are very different and they have different attributes, starting attributes and whatever. So, to define them as separate stuff and to make them actual childs of this class called fruit, you can use the extends keyword and you put it right after apple. So, the apple extends fruit. It's an extension to fruit. It's a child of fruit because it just adds more on to fruit. All right? And when you generate the constructor as you see right here, you might be wondering, oh, what is this? It's super. And you guys probably don't know about the shortcut, but if you hold on the control button and you click on something, you can highlight stuff and go to where it came from. Alright? So, click seeds, example. Click the fruit, example. Alright? So, it goes to this constructor. So, think of it like, because our Apple Classic sends the fruit, instead of having to rewrite this code just like instead of having to rewrite methods when you call them um, you can use that constructor and just pass it through super and everything else can be re uh, like uh, used by using that super so say right in here we want to uh, inside the apples we want to have default values because the apples are going to always have the same amount of seeds right pretty sure they have around 10 seeds so we always know they're gonna have ten seeds, right? But we don't always know the color. It could be green, could be red, could be yellow, right? But for oranges, I'm going to have to say that they do all have the same amount of seeds and also colors. So orange is also a fruit. You don't have to include this code either for orange, and they're both children of fruit. So we still need the parameters, but we can just pass well, actually, we don't need these parameters, but, and we can still pass, just as before, the seeds. I'm pretty sure there's four seeds in an orange, and they are all, I'm most assuredly, they're all orange. They're all the color orange. Alright? So, yeah, that's about it. And you see how, look how much code difference it used to be. Like, there used to be, like, ten lines here. Now this does everything and you also have your behavior. So you have the remove seeds method or behavior, whichever you want to name it, that's attached to orange because of its children identification between orange and fruit. And fruit's parentage over the orange. Alright? So let me show you how this can work in um, a cooler way. Demonstrate some stuff. So so we have the fruit. The fruit's going to be our main class. Create that method. Remember that? That's the entry method, initialization method. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be create a new or two fruits. So first of all, remember I always used to specify like Xbox controller as the type Xbox controller, Xbox controller equals new Xbox controller and yada 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 in there. Right? Remember that? Well, now it's different. We're going to specify the type, or I'll just replace them so it'll be easier to see. We're going to specify the type as fruit, and the name is going to be apple. We're going to set that equal to a new apple, not a new fruit. Remember, you can never do new fruit because it's abstract. And we need the uh, color. So let's just say it's red. There we go, we have a new apple. And then also, fruit orange equals new orange. And that's all we need because remember, we know the seeds and the color. So there, we have two fruits. They're both fruits, but they're different because they're equal to a new apple or a new orange sets the attributes itself. All right? And even if you don't have a specific type, so say you absolutely want it to be an apple, and you name this apple 2. Set it equal to a new apple, it's going to be red still. You can do that as well. Except this takes away an important element of object orientation. This is called polymorphism. And polymorphism allows you to cast it back into its parent form so that it can be mutated or 
poly... I don't even know the word for it because it's a very long word. But it's to be transformed into another. Or you cast it into just a fruit. Everything that was specific to apples gets removed. And then you can recast it into an orange. So I'll show you how to do that. So we don't want to use that because we can't cast that back. We can, but it's a bit not smart to do. Alright? So say we have a fruit again. But this is just going to be called a fruit. We're going to uh, so it's equal to a new orange. Right. So it's just a fruit right now. And then we can actually cast that back and then cast it forward into an apple, as I told you before. So we can have an apple just to prove that it's actually an apple. Apple equals the fruit. And then you cast it by having it like that or well this name can't be used and you cast it into an apple by having the uh, like this you have the class name inside the open or open and close per, uh, parentheses and that's how you cast it and you turn it back into an apple you turn it into an apple from a fruit also you can turn this back into a fruit as well so then you have fruit we'll just reuse it and set it equal to fruit but it's going to be for apple too and now we just converted the apple into a fruit and then from so you can do more stuff like you can set you can do this not apple too orange too equals then cast it back from the fruit but you cannot or you may be able to cast it also through directly casting like this I'll show you and as you see you cannot cast directly from the apple too but if you use the fruit even though it's already set to apple it does not matter okay so I hope you guys can understand that and that's pretty much how it works so anyway you always wanna you wanna try to keep them into generic forms so you can cast easily you never have to recast and it's a lot simpler because you see oh yeah it's a fruit it's called apple and it's a new apple fruit so apple fruit type right remember because they're all gripped and then from so we'll do some stuff onto them so for the apples we know that their seeds are already set we know we set them so we set them to eight but we're going to remove all the seeds so that'll be left with zero and the orange we're going to keep the same so we'll print this stuff out so the apple has blah 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 seeds or the whatever color it is so apple color has apple dot seeds seeds and I forgot to mention this in the last video but as you see when you use these uh, plus signs this adds whatever the value of this is to the string and that's a process known as concatenation and it concatenates when, when the process happens it concatenates a value to the string it's like attaching it to the string I mean I thought that was pretty simple to understand but some people are different but you should be able to understand that <laughs> and the orange orange has <laughs> orange dot seeds seeds so we'll go ahead and demonstrate that this actually works and to prove the concept true all right because we're removing seeds and all apples we showed you have 10 seeds by default I'll show you that you, this stuff is actually shared between the fruit so let's go ahead and run the apple has zero seeds we removed all the seeds and the orange has four by default the orange orange so say we actually want to remove the seeds of the orange also and we don't want to for the apple and I'm going to introduce you guys some something new in a bit, but I'll just leave that right there so you can guys you guys can think about that, have it in your mind. But look at the example. Now you see the apple has ten seeds and the orange has no seeds because we removed the seeds before we printed it out. Right? Well, now I'm going to be introducing you guys to something called commenting. And commenting allows you to ignore a complete line, part of a line or blocks as in like this whole thing or pretty much any code you want you can ignore it and during compilation this stuff will get removed 
and Java won't worry about it because it's just there for the human to see or just there to only be uncommented when you need it back or to show it as a placeholder etc alright um, with comments you can also tell information about your program and this is important because if you write large applications like say you have like 50 I don't know 50, but maybe you have like a thousand fruits right you're going to want to keep track of those all right so by adding comments and something that I'm going to later refer to and introduce you actually right after this explanation called Java Docs it allows you to consolidate them all under one documentation provided by a parent class alright so that shouldn't sound too scary so anyway let's say right in here um, we commented we still want to comment even though the first line is commented out even though you can still write normally and it'll still excuse it if you ever want to uncomment this then you don't have to worry about re-adding those double uh, slashes they're already there for you also when you comment you want to leave a space in between the brackets and the comment so that means that or it's useful because you can read it easier and it's more separated and it often you actually want to line all the comments up if you're really wanting to get this organized but that's only in the case where you have a lot of comments and it's hard to manage but anyway we're going to comment this out and we're going to say oh yeah why did we comment this out commented because why we never needed to remove the seeds right and then on this line we can line it up but we did want to Remove the seeds from the orange. Ah, I spelled that wrong. So yeah. And then for these two lines, say we never wanted to print this out. And I'm going to show you guys a shortcut. If you hold down control and you press the slash, ooh, comments right for you. Alright? Comments both whatever you have selected. And if you hit the backslash while holding control, it removes that. Or I hoped it would. <laughs> I kind of failed right there, but whatever. It should remove it out. Maybe it's because I had to save it. It's not working. Oh well. But anyway, yeah. If you hold the spaces, <laughs> it'll comment it out. And if you hold Control and you hold Shift and then you hit the front space, the space that goes towards the right, you get a new kind of comment, which I didn't show you. And I'm going to explain this now. This is called a block comment. And you can comment whole stuff from a beginning to an end point. And the beginning point is marked by this. Slash and then an asterisk. And then the end point is ma uh, marked by an asterisk and then another slash. And by removing that, you uncomment everything. So you can even comment this entire class just by doing that. Alright? As you see, Apple gets an error because now it's like, oh, what's fruit? So, yeah. I hope you guys can understand that. But now we're going to get into a more, even in, more important subject, which is extremely important, especially when developing for open source projects or for people that you're working with. People that, or, or in a project where pe other people are going to manage your code, other people are going to be looking at your code, other people are going to need to understand your code. All right? And this is called Java documentation. And Eclipse allows you, and actually, it's actually done through the JDK. It's a tool in there. But Eclipse, we'll just refer to that for now, allows you to create an HTML page that includes all of this documentation. And you would want to do this in order to display and explain a program without revealing the source code. All right? So that's just the case. Anyway, to document anything, you you use sort of like the uh, code block commenting, except it's two asterisks, and you'll see that Eclipse highlights this in blue. And it will probably automatically generate the uh, author title for you guys, like with this tag. And these things are called tags, and they allow for easy specification or easy, easy design of whatever you want to title the author as because this is specific and related to or very very common to see 
So when we high load, highlight, high load, highlight over anything, we can see that it formats the author as so. All right, that's something that's very common to see the authors, people who worked on this class, this file. All right. Another common thing is uh, what was it? <laughs> oh yeah, and param. Very very common. So if you see, we do this for the constructor. You see, it generates the param. That means that's a parameter, and we can describe the parameter here, and blah blah blah, like that. And then we can describe the entire constructor. The constructor, uh, constructor, constructor is awesome. Seeds the amount seeds of the fruit the color of the fruit and now you see when you highlight over fruit the constructor is awesome the amount of seeds in the fruit and the color in the fruit if you want to change this to more realistic um, you could change it to something like constructs a new fruit alright so you can also do this for anything you want even attributes so the amount of seeds in the fruit also, these aren't very good descriptions of color, the color of the fruit. Well, they are for fruit, but in some cases, you're not going to want to restate what it is, because seeds cannot be further explained. I mean, it can be further explained, but you're not going to generally have to explain seeds to somebody. But if you're dealing with, like, software that accesses databases, uses new technology that you created inside your program, you're going to want to document and explain that inside here instead of just saying, oh yeah, this is the this is the host name of the protocol. No, that's not going to help out. You're going to have to explain what the host name is and what the protocol is. Alright? So yeah, we can add documentation for the method as well. Removes all the seeds from the fruit. And now also, inside your child class, or anywhere you access that from, you'll be able to see the stuff that you refer to from super. And you see that you can see from fruit, fruit dot, the constructor fruit of that accepts uh, seeds and color, it has the documentation right here. And that's very good because now you can manage it all. You, you know what the fruit does from anywhere you go that is a child of a fruit. And you know a lot. Alright? Also for the method... You just highlight over it and you see, oh yeah, that's what it does. Even though this is self-explanatory, because you're going to want to name everything as to be self-explanatory as possible. Um, if we had something like connect to synchronization database when Q is empty, all right? You want to know, oh, what Q, what database, and what does synchronization mean, right? So, just keep that in mind, okay? Also, this method it usually isn't isn't documented but if you're releasing a starter program like I kinda am here but yeah not but and not yet but rather you're going to maybe or possibly want to document this especially if it's a program where you're running other things that are supposed to be like applications that they just pass the main method inside here so say you have a program that actually is three applications separate right they all open like three whole bunch of buttons and stuff on the window they open three of those right three GUIs they're called graphical user interfaces they open three of those and probably you're going to access the main method which can be run from either one of them so people can have a choice to run all of them at once or just each one sing singularly alright maybe you wanna document that I usually don't alright so yeah I hope we did good this lesson hope you guys understood it because a lot of the stuff I explained to you was very basic in the next lesson, we're going to be learning more about abstraction, all right, and more about making objects dynamic and limiting access on certain things to provide people with a with with code that they can maintain. And they know exactly what to do when they create their own children or parents from stuff. All right, thank you guys. Subscribe. Do whatever. See you.